Hello, it's Sniper Dave, Tennessee. Today I'll do a quick review of the Savage 22 rifle, uh, Mark II FVSR. Um, buddy of mine picked this up on Black Friday for $219. A really low budget, uh, but pretty nice. Um, first thing you notice when you take it out of the box, full length Picatinny rail which is nice. I did check the torque on the screws was correct. I didn't even take it off. Uh, you got a heavy barrel fluted, which is nice, threaded, of course. Uh, the stock is really cheap. It was cheap plastic stock. Uh, not much there to brag about. And of course, the AccuTrigger. Uh, in the box, you'll have the owner's manual, your bolt, and you see this bolt has a huge oversized bolt knob and with the savage rifles you always have to have the safety on fire the trigger fully depressed in order to put the bolt in or out of the receiver nice looking oversized bolt knob uh, you have a five round magazine uh, and the AccuTrigger adjustment tool uh, every AccuTrigger I ever had was as light as it would go when you get it you're not really gonna do anything with that tool but make it heavier uh, came with a really nice thread protector uh, quality I dare say that the thread protector was more expensive to produce than the stock <laughs> uh, five and a half pounds it's pretty light as carryable as any bolt action 22 but with this big oversized knob I thought let's set it up like a heavyweight long-range rifle dress it up that way uh, I had this scope. Somebody gave me this scope a couple years ago. It's a BSA 4 to 16 by 40 contender, locking turrets. Uh, you know, Chinese made scope, probably 125 dollars something like that. Somebody gave it to me. It'd been laying back there a couple years. I thought all I need is a set of rings, so I went and found the loophole aluminum, Weaver style high mat. Medium would have given me a better cheek weld, but the way this scope is made, I had to go with the high in order to clear. But it's it's still okay. Uh, and the bipod is uh, called, well, I guess that's a Chinese made copy of a Harris bipod. Uh, I've always paid the money to get the Harris brand. I've never bought one of these cheap ones before, but it's a low budget deal. So I thought we'd try to keep it that way. Uh, absolutely insane how quiet this rifle is. I'm going to demonstrate this Agula 38 grain subsonic hollow point. Um, tested six different loads. I'll give you the results from each one here uh, shortly. But this thing is really quiet. Uh, the, the microphone, the camera will not uh, relate to you just how quiet this is. You'd have to be here. But I got uh, steel targets at 30 yards. I have to raise the bipod up a little. Got some little steel prairie dog shaped targets out there. How quiet. Okay, show you a little bit more example of just what kind of noise level. You basically, you hear the firing pin snap and you hear the bullet hit the target. I mean, it's crazy. There's a foam spinner out there at 60. Uh, it's green, about twice the distance of the big gong there at 30. Super quiet. So, uh, really a lot of fun to shoot. This AccuTrigger is really nice. I think every one of them is a little different. You never get two exactly the same. This is a really nice AccuTrigger. Uh, and when it breaks in, I'm sure it'll be even better. I tried six different ammo. This Augula 38 grain subsonic. The old Winchester 40 grain subsonic was a mean looking hollow point, but it's been out of production for several years. <clears throat> I still got a little bit of it left. Of course, CCI standard, which is the pun, the standard by which all other subsonic ammunition is judged. Uh, 
uh, Gem Tech. I've seen a lot of that on the market the past few years. I suspect it's loaded by CCI for Gem Tech, I would think. It's a Winchester suppressor loaded at 42 grain. I tried one box of them, and all the guns I've tried, it really didn't group as well for me. And then the CCI came out with a suppressor 22 and a 45 grain. I've never had that one group well in any of the rifles that I've tried. Uh, and I suspect because 16 inch twist. I'd say if, if a man had a 12 inch twist or a 10 inch twist barrel, that would probably be a really tight group and load. However, this gun did shoot it fairly well. I'll show you the results right here. Uh, down here below the line, which was December 10th, a couple of days ago, 38 grain Agula. I ran it both times, ran it around twice, was the tightest group, and the Winchester didn't group as good. It usually does better than that, but not too bad. This is 50 yards. So, CCI standard. The, the standards almost sounded like a little bit of transonic crack down there next to the target. Like, it was about 50 degrees, and the speed must be just right on the borderline. You could almost hear it trying to give a little sonic crack, so I didn't care for that. The Gem Tech uh, did just about as good as the Ogula. The 42 grain Winchester didn't do bad, but the 45 grain CCI, I've never had that load to group in any of my 16 inch twist 22s LR. These two shots are likely just me. This round was dead quiet. Each one has its own, it's cool that shooting 22 caliber subsonic suppressed that you can hear so well. And you're hearing noises that you never heard before. The firing pin, the firing pin spring, uh, the bullet on the target. Uh, it's great that you, it's so, the noise level is so low that we can hear all these things we never heard before, but each one of these loads sounded a little different. The Agula was probably the quietest, except for that 45 grain CCI suppressor. I only have a couple boxes of it. Uh, can't believe it stabilized in the 16 inch twist barrel, but dead quiet. That had to be the quietest load out of all of them. Uh, I'd say the standards were probably the loudest because they did have a little transonic crack to them. So two days later, I came back. Oh, you see the Agula was a little low. I came up three inches, which would be an inch and a half at 50 yards, which I guess that appropriately. And I sat down yesterday, the 12th, and I fired this group and I thought, this thing's not gripping that well. And I realized it was me. It was Saturday, I was running around, taking care of my Saturday chores, doing this, doing that. A rain was coming in, and I want to get out here and fire some groups before it started raining, and I had not settled down. Proper bench technique, feet in the same place every time, elbows in the same place every time, cheek in the same place every time, breath the same every time, trigger the same every time. Bench rest technique to fire five shot groups from the bench, and as I settled down, you see how much better I got. The rifle didn't do that garbage. That I did that. So this is how the gun shoots. This is just up three inches, which would be an inch and a half from here. That's going to be my load. Uh, I've got a, a brick or so of that from that back when you get it for $30 a brick years ago. But I love that that happened to me because it demonstrated exactly what I was going for. You can get the feel of sitting at the bench firing five shot grips. You know, I can get six millimeter Creedmoor and I can drive an hour to the range and pay a range fee, you know, and shoot up to 500 yards. My zero is 200 with that particular rifle. Ammunition being as expensive as it is, even for a reloader, you can have the same experience right here in the backyard. It's so quiet, the neighbors won't even know you're shooting. Uh, Savage Mark II FVSR. Big thumbs up. Good value for the money. Very inexpensive rifle. The stock is cheap. There are aftermarket stocks available. Uh, but I was trying to keep a low budget thing. Uh, I didn't forget to mention the suppressor is the essence of liberty. I just borrowed it off another rifle, of course, but very pleased with the performance of this inexpensive little rifle. This is Sniper Dave from Tennessee. Thanks for watching.